we are going to learn about JSP. JSP stands for Java Server Pages. Here is the definition of Java Server Pages. Java Server Pages JSP is a server-side programming technology that enables the creation of dynamic platform independent method for building web-based applications. We are going to learn about the how to convert HTML into JSP. JSP simply puts Java inside HTML pages. You can take any existing HTML page and change its extension to JSP instead of HTML. In fact, this is the perfect exercise for your first JSP. Now load JSP file in web browser. You will see the same output but it will take longer but only the first time if you reload it again it will load normally the reason behind this is we are going to see in the next slide here we can see the figure which explains how JSP request is handled by the server when we write URL into the web browser, the web browser sends it to the server that is indicated by the arrow. Its name is request URL for JSP page. After getting the request, server retrieves the data from the storage. Data means the file which is requested by the client. After getting the file from the storage, the server executes the embedded Java code in the HTML page and sends those results and HTML to the client and the client will show the in it in the browser. In the next tutorial, we are going to see how to set up the environment for the JSP. Hello friends. In this video tutorial, we are going to learn how JSP environment is set up. As we know that JSP uses Java. So we need to tell the operating system that Java is installed where. This step involves downloading and implementation of the Java Software Development Kit SDK and setting up path environment variable appropriately. A development environment is where you would develop your JSP programs, test them and finally run them. First of all, you need to download Java SDK latest version from the below URL. The URL is given below. Follow the instructions to install and configure the setup. Finally set path and Java home environment variables to refer to the directory that contains Java and Java C. Typically Java underscore install underscore dir slash bin and java underscore install underscore dir respectively java underscore install underscore dir is the directory name of java it is the directory where we have installed java software if you are running windows and install the sdk in c slash jdk 1.5.0 underscore 2 then right click on my computer select properties then advanced system settings then environment variables then you would update the path value and press the ok button let us perform the above operations
click on start I assume that you are using Windows 7 after clicking start click on computer right click on computer and select properties this is the window of system properties on the left hand side we have device manager remote settings system protection and advanced system settings on the bottom hand we have other links we have to select advanced system settings click on that in system properties window we have five tabs we have to select advanced tab and click on environment variables I have already set the path which is C program files Java JDK version name slash bin I will repeat the procedure see that here no path variable exists click on new we have two names rather two fields variable name variable value variable name is path now variable value is the path where bin directory is existing click on my computer C drive I have installed it in program files in Java JDK folder and bin now copy the whole path and paste it click ok now the variable is having its value click ok click ok whether it is working or not click on cmd it is the command prompt click on that write java c if it shows such output then it is working welcome friends in this video tutorial we are going to learn how to install a server setting up web server tomcat set java underscore home in environment variable as java underscore install underscore dir slash jdk version directory according to the previous tutorial so this statement says that we have to set java underscore home variable in the environment variable its value will be java home directory slash jdk directory a number of servers are available in the market that support jsp we will learn how to install apache tomcat server it is a open source server available in the market it is freely available download the latest version from this given link after downloading unpack the binary distribution into convenient location for example in C slash Apache Tomcat 5.5.29 on Windows create catalina underscore home environment variable 
pointing to our location that is c slash apache tomcat now we can start tomcat server by executing the following commands c slash apache tomcat directory name slash bin slash startup dot bat after the server is started we can use the functionalities provided by the server we can stop the server by executing the following command c slash apache tomcat directory slash bin slash shutdown now we will do it practically click on start right click on computer select properties click on advanced system settings on the advanced tab click on environment variables click on new right here java home here write the java home value that will be the jdk directory path go into the jdk directory and copy the path of jdk directory click ok I have forgot to set Catalina home variable so I will repeat the procedure its value will be the apache directory path this is the compress file so we have to extract it I am putting it in the C directory. Copy this path and paste it into the Catalina home variable. Now click OK. Now to start the server, we have to go to the server directory that is Apache Tomcat directory. Then inside the bin directory, we have startup.bat. Double click on that. We can access it by the URL HTTP colon slash localhost colon eight zero HD zero. This is the Apache server home page. Now close it. to shut down the server we click on shutdown.bat which is located in the bin directory in the apache folder this is the server window if i am clicking on the shutdown 
file then this server window will be closed now the server is closed this is the directory where we can put our JSP files so that we can run it into the browser welcome friends in this video tutorial we are going to learn the JSP lifecycle. Before going to learn JSP lifecycle, we will learn which are the categories of the JSP page. JSP is a Java technology to give client dynamic, well-defined and secure content. The Java server pages 1.2 specification provides web developers with a framework to build applications containing dynamic web content such as HTML, DHTML, XHTML and XML. Most of a JSP file is a plain HTML but it also has special JSP tags. JSP page is divided into two categories. One, elements that are processed on the server. These elements are the embedded JSP tags. Second is template data, that is the static data. The embedded JSP tags called elements are classified into following categories directives, scripting elements, and standard actions. We will learn these categories into the next video tutorials. This is the JSP life cycle. There are four steps of JSP life cycle. First JSP compilation, second JSP initialization, third JSP execution and four JSP cleanup. Let us talk about the first step. First step is JSP compilation. When a browser asks for JSP, the JSP engine will check to see whether it needs to compile the page. If the page has never been compiled or if JSP has been modified after the last compilation, then JSP engine compiles the page. Second step is JSP initialization. In this step, the container will call the JSP init method. In this method, we generally initialize database connections, open files and create lookup tables. Third step is JSP execution. Whenever a browser requests a JSP and the page has been loaded and initialized, the JSP engine invokes underscore JSP service method in the JSP. This method takes an HTTP servlet request and HTTP servlet response as its parameters. This method is responsible for generating the response for the request and this method is also responsible for generating responses to all the HTTP methods like GET, POST, etc. Last step is JSP Cleanup. In this method, it will destroy the JSP. JSP destroy method will release database connections or closing open files or the actions which need to be executed at the end of the execution of the JSP page.
welcome friends in this tutorial we are going to learn about implicit objects object is an instance of a class jsp implicit objects are the java objects that the jsp container makes available to developers in each page and developer can call them directly without being explicitly declared jsp implicit objects are also called predefined variables there are total 9 implicit objects are available in jsp request response out session application config page context page and exception we are going to learn about all of them one by one request implicit object request object is an instance of javax.servlet.http.httpservlet request object each time a client requests a page the jsp engine creates a new object to represent that request the request object provides methods to get http header information including form data cookies and http methods etc response implicit object it is an instance of a java class that implements the javax.servlet.http.http servlet response interface it represents the response to be given to the client it is used to set the response content type to add the cookie and redirect the response out implicit object it is an instance of the javax.servlet.jsp.jsp writer class it is used to write content to be sent to the client session implicit object the session object is an instance of javax.servlet.http.http session class it is used to save session information of a particular user application implicit object it is an instance of a javax.servlet.servlet context object it is used to retrieve information about the web application in which jsp is running config implicit object it is an instance of javax.servlet.servlet config class it gives facility for a jsp page to obtain the configuration parameters available page context implicit object it is an instance of a javax.servlet.jsp.page context object it is used to access several page attributes and it also contains reference to implicit objects page implicit object it is an instance of the java.lang.object class it references to the java servlet object that implements the jsp page exception implicit object it is an instance of the java.lang.throwable class it represents the occurred exception description for the jsp page welcome friends in this video tutorial we are going to learn about scripting in jsp jsp programmers can insert java code and logic in a jsp using scripting java server pages present dynamically generated output which is to be sent to the client scripting components are scriptlets comments expressions declarations and escape sequences let's have a look at this sample program scriptlet.jsp these are the delimiters of scriptlet inside it i have written out.println function out.println function directly writes the text to the client's browser 
below it we have single line comment next is the multiple line comment we can have multiple line comment between these two delimiters next is a jsp comment these are the delimiters and and we cannot insert it inside the scriptlet next is the xhtml comment we also can't put it inside the scriptlet these are the delimiters of xhtml comment next is jsp expression there is a difference between scriptlet delimiters and jsp expressions we have equal sign here in jsp expression i have written a expression inside the jsp expression tags when jsp page is executed the jsp engine will convert the expression to the string and output that string to the client as a part of the response next is jsp declarations these are the jsp delimiters inside jsp declaration we can declare a variable and functions i have declared an integer named 8 and value is set to 8 there are several special characters in jsp or escape sequences i have taken example of two escape sequences that is slash double quote and slash single quote i have stored them in variable 1 and variable 2 respectively and i have printed it into the browser let's run the sample look at the output carefully this is scriptlet testing inside scriptlet below there is a time date in the third line it is printed in the fourth double quote and in the fifth single quote now look at the source code this out dot print ln line has printed the line this is scriptlet testing inside scriptlet br is used for new line single line comment and multiple line comment are not printed we have printed time by using this expression I have printed value of a from here. I have printed double quote and single quote from here. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we are going to learn standard actions. Using standard actions, we can include content from other resources. forward request to other resources and interact with java bins action jsp include enables dynamic content to be included in java server page at request time it has two attributes first page attribute it specifies the url path of the resource to be included second is flush attribute it specifies whether the buffer should be flushed after the include is performed specifying this attribute is mandatory currently 
plus attribute suppose only true value this is the sample file main.jsp let's run it The output is as expected. Let's view the source code. Close it. Close the browser. I have not included any file now I am including a file I have included a file called date.jsp. This is the content of date.jsp. I have used Java expression in this file. Now go to the main.jsp and run it. We can see that there is a change in the page. Let's view the source code. We can see that these three lines are added after I have included the file named date.jsp we can see that when a browser requests for main.jsp and when this action is executed the date.jsp content will be put here Welcome friends, in this video tutorial, we are going to learn about standard actions. Action JSP forward enables a JSP to forward request processing to a different resource. Request processing by the original JSP terminates as soon as the JSP forwards the request. This action has only a page attribute that specifies the relative URL of the resource of the same web application to which the request should be forwarded. Syntax is given below. A relative URL of the page, it can be a static page, JSP page or a servlet. This is the sample file to demonstrate the use of forward actions. We can see that the page attribute is set to forward.jsp. So when we will run this file, the control will be forwarded to forward.jsp page. Look at the sample file source code. I have used two param actions. In the first, I have set name to id and value to 23. In the second, I have set name to marks and 
value 298. Let's run the program. Look at the output friends. Let's go back to the source code. When this sample file is loaded, the control is forwarded to the forward.jsp file. So we will see the source code of forward.jsp. Here we can see that in the scriptlet, I have printed two lines and the next two lines prints the name value pair id and value marks and value. This is how we can use the forward action with param action. In the previous tutorial, we have learned include action. There is a difference between include action and the forward action. In case of include action, the included file is executed and its contents are copied to the file in which the include action is used. But in case of forward action, the control is not coming back to the calling file. In this case, the calling file is main.jsp. Welcome friends. In this tutorial, we are going to learn standard actions in JSP. Action JSP use bin enables a JSP to manipulate a Java object. This action creates a Java object or locates an existing object for use in the JSP. It has several attributes. They are ID, scope, class, bin name, and type. ID attribute. The name used to manipulate the Java object with actions JSP set property and JSP get property. A variable of this name is also declared for use in JSP scripting elements. The name specified here is case sensitive scope attribute, the scope in which the Java object is accessible. It can be page, request, session or application. The default scope is page. Class attribute. It is the qualified class name of Java object. Bin name attribute. It is the name of bin that can be used with method instantiate of class java dot beans dot beans to load a java bin into memory. Type attribute. It is the type of the java bin. It can be the same type as the class attribute, a superclass of that type or an interface implemented by that type. This is the sample program to demonstrate the use of use bin action. The id attribute of use bin is set to test and class is set to my package dot use bin. The name attribute of set property action is set to test, property is set to message and value is set to hello use bin. The name attribute of get property action is set to test and property is set to message. Now go to the usebin.java class. Here we have declared a string message and we have set the two functions get message and set message. Get message returns the message string value and set message sets the message string.
now go to the main.jsp and run it see the output carefully the output is message colon hello use bin now go to the source code the set property action sets the message to hello use bin and get property gets the value of message welcome friends in this video tutorial we are going to learn about directives in gsp directives are messages to the gsp container that enable the programmer to specify page settings such as the error page to include content from other resources and to specify custom tag libraries for use in the gsp directives are processed at translation time hence directives do not produce any immediate output because they are processed before the gsp accepts any requests there are three types of directives in gsp page include and tag library page directive it defines page settings for the gsp container to process the syntax is given below attributes for page directive are as below language the scripting language used in the gsp extends attribute it specifies the class from which the translated gsp will be inherited import attribute it specifies a comma separated list of fully qualified type names and packages that will be used in the current gsp session attribute it specifies whether the page participates in a session the values for this attribute are true participates in a session the default or false does not participate in a session buffer attribute it specifies the buffer size of the output buffer used with the implicit object out it can be set to none for no buffering or set to any size the default size of the buffer is 8 kb auto flush attribute when it is set to true the output buffer for implicit object out flushed automatically when the buffer fills if it is set to false gives error when the buffer overflows is thread safe attribute if it is set to true then the gsp page can process multiple requests at the same time if it is set to false then only one request can be processed by that gsp at a time content type attribute it specifies the mime type of the data in the response to the client the default type is text html this is the sample file to demonstrate the use of page directive you can see that in the first line we have used a page directive and import attribute is set to java.util. star so in java.util package we have many functionalities i have used several of them you can see there are three functionalities i have used let's run the example see the output carefully
close the browser the day of the month is printed from here the month is printed from here and year is printed from here these are all the functionalities of java.util package welcome friends in this tutorial we are going to learn directives in gsp include directive it includes the content of another resource once at gsp translation time the include directive has only one attribute file that specifies the url of the resource to include tag library directive it is used to insert custom tags in gsp page syntax is given below url it locates the library prefix attribute it defines the prefix for the custom tag this is the sample program to demonstrate the use of include and tag library directives see the code carefully we can see that between the two dotted lines we have included a file called include.jsp and below it we have used tag library directive url is set to http java.sun.com jsp jstl core and prefix is set to c so all the custom tags are prefixed by c let's run the program see the output carefully now go back to the source code let's see the include.jsp file we can see that there are three lines which is resulted by the include.jsp let's go back to the main.jsp so this include tag is replaced by the include.jsp file contents and this is the usage of include directive now see the last line we have used a custom tag it is prefixed by c and this attribute and value are fetched from the url that is the tag library welcome friends in this tutorial we are going to learn sessions in jsp HTTP protocol is a stateless protocol that means that it can't persist the data HTTP treats each request as a new request so every time you will send a request you will be considered as a new user it is not reliable when you are doing user specific operations the solution of the above problem is session management session management when a client is authenticated using login information the unique session id or the token is generated to identify the client after that 
all the request from the client are identified by the session id or the token it can be achieved by the following functionalities cookies url rewriting hidden form fields and session that is the implicit object cookies they are the object of javax.servlet.http.cookie class they are stored on client side url rewriting in url rewriting destination page url is modified to track the user this is the sample file to demonstrate the use of cookie see that cookie object is created we have passed two arguments in the constructor of cookie first argument is the name of cookie that is the username and second argument is the value of cookie value is user1 in the second line we have set the age of the cookie it is the 24 hours the argument is in seconds and in the third line we have added cookie to the browser let's run the code see the output we can see that cookie is set successfully this is how we can add the cookie in the browser now let's see how to get a cookie value i have created an object of class cookie request dot get cookies function returns all the cookies which exist in the browser in the for loop we have tested that whether the username cookie is exist or not if it is existed then we have checked that whether its value is user1 or not if it is there then we have printed it in the browser now let's see the example of rewrite url it may happen that some browser has disabled the cookies in that case we can use url rewriting see here that this page redirects the control to handle user dot jsp by providing some values let's run this file it prints welcome sam see the url handle user dot jsp so we will see the code of handle user dot jsp see here that between the scriptlet we have get the value of user using request dot get parameter go back to the previous file we have set the value of user to same in the url so handle user dot jsp now can perform the user specific operations this is how we can track the user if we want to redirect the user from handle user dot jsp to some another page then again we will set user to same and redirect to the other page welcome friends in this video tutorial you are going to learn about sessions in jsp in previous video tutorial you have learned about cookies 
and URL writing methods. In this video tutorial, you are going to learn hidden form fields in session. Hidden form fields. It is one of the way to maintain the session. In hidden form fields, the HTML entry will be like this. Input type equal to hidden, name equal to whatever the name will be and value equal to null. When you submit the form, the specified name and value will be get included in get or post method. Session Implicit Object The connection between client and the server is provided by session object. The session objects do not lose the variables and the value remains for the user session. Mostly used objects method are set attribute and get attribute. Set attribute This method sets the value of object as strings value and you can get this value in other JSP page which is connected to this page. Get attribute this method is used to fetch the value of string which is set by you in other JSP page using set attribute method. This is the sample file to demonstrate the use of hidden fields. This is the form tag. Action attribute is set to getting hidden field dot JSP. Method attribute is set to post and we have used one text field and one hidden field. Text field name is name and value is set to null. Hidden field name is hidden and value is set to this is demo of hidden field. When we click on the submit button, the control will be transferred to getting hidden field dot gsp. Now let's run the program. Enter your name. Click on submit. See the output carefully. Welcome Jack. We can read hidden fields. The hidden text is this is demo of hidden field. Now go back to the source code. Now go to the getting hidden field dot gsp. We can see that Jack was printed by the first scriptlet. The name parameter is fetched from the hidden for dot gsp. And the hidden text was printed by request.get parameter hidden. That is the second scriptlet. This file demonstrates the use of session implicit object. We can see that action is set to process form.jsp and method is post. We have used a text box. When we click on the submit, the control will be transferred to process form.jsp. Let's run the program. Enter the name. Click submit. This page is process form.jsp. There is a link inside it 
go to your profile click on it it says welcome sam this file is profile.jsp now go back to the source code when we clicked on this form we were redirected to the process form.jsp so look at the process form.jsp we can see that in this program we are getting parameter name and we are using the set attribute method to set the session the session name is id and its value is name below it we have a hyperlink which is redirecting us to the profile.jsp let's see the code of profile.jsp it prints the attribute of session id in the previous program we have set the attribute id to same so it will print same welcome friends in this video tutorial you are going to learn database connectivity in jsp in this tutorial we will learn how to connect jsp with my sql steps to create connectivity with my sql download and install my sql server the link is given below create database we have used student database download my sql connector jar file from the given link add the jar file to project library so that we can connect to the my sql database now last step is connect to database using jdbc driver following functionalities will be used in connectivity try catch within the try block we will write the statements to connect my sql server if there is an error then control will go to the catch block in catch block we will write the error handling code class dot for name dot new instance class dot for name loads the driver com dot mysql dot jdbc dot driver driver manager dot get connection this function takes three argument first argument is connection url that is the location of database second argument is username that is root third argument is password for the user root see that in connection url we are providing port of the my sql server here it is 3306 the default value but it may happen that default port is not working and my sql is working on other port in this case we have to find the port on which my sql is running now open my sql command line client
it asks for root password in this system root password is set to null so i will press enter to find the my sql tcp ip port write show variables like port in single quote you can see that the port value is 3306 it is the default port for my sql now go back to the slide connection class object it is the identifier to the connection connection dot close it closes the current connection welcome friends this tutorial demonstrates how jsp connects to my sql server this is the main dot jsp file look at the scriptlet first line first line is try and the opening brace here the try block starts first line is connection url is equal to jdbc mysql localhost 3306 student so we are setting connection url string to database url next line is we are creating a connection object tunnel in the next line we have class dot for name dot new instance it loads the jdbc driver com dot mysql dot jdbc dot driver in the next line the function used is driver manager dot get connection it has three parameters connection url the username that is root and the password in this case the password is null in the next line we are checking whether the connection is closed or not if it is not closed then we are printing the message that we have successfully connected to my sql and in the next line we are closing the connection in the next line try block closes in the next line catch block is started in the catch block we are printing that unable to connect to database and printing the error type let's run the program we are getting the error unable to connect to the database let's see the code by observing the code we can see that there is no error in the code we have forgot to add the mysql connector jar file to this project let's do it right click on the library click on add library select the library 
connector click on add library now run the program error occurred let's stop the glassfish server and rebuild the program now run the main.jsp successfully connected to my sql server using tcp ip welcome friends in this tutorial you are going to learn how login page in gsp works see the code carefully we can see that action attribute a form is set to the link of a servlet whose name is a login and method is set to post we have used a text box and a password box and we have created an hyperlink for new user dot gsp page When we click on the submit button we will be redirected to a login servlet Let's run the code You can see that it asks for the username and password I have registered earlier so i am entering username and password click on login you can see that the output is welcome sam and below it we have a hyperlink go to your profile i have entered username and password and it shows my name which i entered at the registration time so let's view the content of a login servlet the a login servlet execution starts from this line this to line retrieves the username and password we entered now in try block if condition checks whether the username and password are null or not if either of them is null then error message is printed that provide all the details and it gives the login page link if username and password are not blank then else block will be executed in the first line we are loading the jdbc driver in the next line we are creating the connection and in the next line we create the statement statement dot execute query executes the given query and stores all the result into rst object in the if block we are checking whether there is any data in rst or not if there is any data 
then we are checking whether the given password username both matches with the database data or not if it matches then user is authenticated and we are creating a session for that particular user using session dot get attribute if it is not matching then we are printing not true message and in the next line we are closing the connection welcome friends in this tutorial you will learn how to register a new user using jsp this is the file to demonstrate the registration see the action attribute of form it is set to form servlet servlet method is set to post there are several text box in the form one is for name other is for username next is for password for gender and for city when we click on the submit the control will go to form servlet servlet let's run the file here it requires data for the new registration let's do it click on the submit you can see the message from the servlet that sign up is successful and below it we have a hyperlink to the profile page the file currently running is form servlet so we will see the code of form servlet servlet this is the servlet file these two lines gets the parameters from the request object the parameters are name username password the drop down menu selection and city name we can see that in if block we are checking that whether any of the fields on the registration form was blank or not if it was blank then the if condition is true and it will print fill all the fields and it will print a hyperlink to the sign up page now if the condition is false then control will go in the else block the first line is class dot for name it loads the driver jdbc the next line creates the connection connection dot create statement creates the statement 
for the query. Statement dot execute update executes the query and connection dot close closes the connection after the data is inserted into the table we are creating the session for that particular user which has sign up recently using the method session dot set attribute we are creating session name user and setting it to username variable that is the username of the current user if there was an error during all the above operations then the control will go in the catch block and it will print the error occurred